Um, so hi everyone, I'm Greg Lowenthal. Uh, I am a principal solution engineer. I'm the team lead at Acquia, but I am, so yes, I worked at Acquia like Matt, but uh, my presentation has little to do with Acquia, so it's more Drupal. Um, I am in pre-sales, I'm in sales engineering, so I'm technical and I have a computer science background, but I'm not really a developer. But I'm president of the Long Island Native Plant Initiative, LIMPI, not LIMPI, I like to say. Uh, and that's up by me in New York. Uh, and I'm also Master Gardener class of 2022, so last year or the year before, through the Suffolk County uh, Cornell CCE in Suffolk. Uh, and so I did a project for my nonprofit, uh, also for the Master Gardener class, and that's what I'm going to talk about today and some of the challenges I've had. And uh, and some of the some of the uh, the reasons behind Drupal and everything like that. But I this was my first Drupal project ever, uh, so uh, it's you know you guys probably are more uh, knowledgeable than I am. I'm I do all the demos and stuff at Acquia, so all the other products. And you know I while I I'm a Drupal user, um, I don't I don't do a lot of coding. But this was my first project at it, and so it was really uh, interesting and, and it worked out really nicely. So cool. So. So we're gonna go through uh, a little bit about Limpy, like why I why this is happening, uh, why I chose Drupal, some of the implementation details, both from the application, the dev side, also the platform side. So where I'm sticking it, uh, and some results and success, and some challenges that I that I gone through, and and help that I had. Uh, so a little bit about Limpy. The Long Island Native Plant Initiative, uh, we are a volunteer organization uh, and uh, we strive to preserve my local biodiversity by cultivating eth ethically sourced what's known as ecotypic plant material. Ecotypic means that the, uh, that the species are actually from uh, wild populations, the genetics of the region. So uh, the, uh, basically, there's this notion of ecotype. So each section or portion of, of uh, states and areas and re similar regions are um, have a genetic uh, diversity that is specific to that region for specific plants. It's not just the growing across the country scale, right? Uh, so instead of, instead of buying milkweed from Missouri uh, to plant in New York, where I'm from, uh, you know, I go out and collect wild seed from milkweed populations locally, and then we propagate that, and then uh, we we also sell those that we grow uh, as well to, to help preserve and conserve this uh, native diversity. Uh, so basically, what we propagate the native plants and we sell them, but we, we have a nursery yard and a greenhouse facility, and we have these plant signs, and they were, uh, you know, we needed to, to maintain those. We have 80 species now. Uh, we also educate the public uh, and, and do outreach. And so a lot of the information needs to be easy to understand for like a normal homeowner instead of just being scientific and technical, like using terms like ecotypic. Uh, and it has, it has to be accessible. And so once they also, you know, people bring their plants home, you, know, you may forget what you bought and, and what, how, how you, where you wanted to put it in your yard and what, what conditions were good for, for that plant. So before we, when I joined the organization, uh, we had a PowerPoint slide deck, and every slide was a, was a was a uh, a plant sign, and it was updated, maybe, and then we printed them out. So uh, we actually went through a rebranding recently uh, with new logos and things like that. So that would have taken forever to go modify those things. It wasn't even done in a nice like template fashion. Uh, the verbiage was was busy. They were a lot of had a lot of information, and it was sort of technical. Um, and you know, when it was out on the field uh, or you know the greenhouse, we had a problem because people would just like take a picture and then go home, and then God knows if that picture was good or blurry or what they did with it. And uh, my website, Limpy.org, which is on Squarespace, uh, provided very inf very little information about the species. So there was no connection between what was happening on the website, what was happening in the field, and what was happening at home. So uh, as part of my Master Gardener program, we all had to do different projects. And my project I decided to do was, I'm going to build a database uh, of the plant information, make it accessible, the information accessible, but also um, make it accessible so that my team, who is not technical, can modify it. 
and that we can generate signs from that in an automated fashion. And since I worked at Acquia, I was looking at Drupal. Yeah. Uh, so this is my, I, I've, I've been at Acquia for eight and a half years. Uh, before this, I was in closed source systems, major CMS providers. So I started my career at Fatwire, Content Server, which is now um, Oracle. I was at SDL Tridian, and I was at Interwoven twice. Uh, for team sites, so I'm very well familiar with CMSs, and actually, and I originally I didn't even want to use Drupal. I wanted to use like a flat uh, NoSQL database because I thought it was going to be easier. But then I ended up saying like, well, you know, the more I thought about the project, I'm like, well, it's not just the con not not just the plant information and the fields. It was the taxonomies and the relationships and the searchability and the managing both not just the content but like media. So we have pictures, uh, and so it quickly became something that's like, well, I guess I should use Drupal for it, okay, right? And it was good because I, I learned a lot because uh, working at Acquia, we have a demo framework distribution which is already built for me using Acquia tools like Site Studio and stuff like that that are, that are not just vanilla Drupal. And so I, don't, I, I never really touched vanilla Drupal besides installing and showing someone, oh, you can install it, but not actually using it. So this was my first time doing that. Um, and some of the other features that I added on uh, were basically, you know, generating the, those plant signs, uh, that was the main requirement, uh, through PDF generation, uh, doing a QR code so we can bring it back to the site. And most recently I did a referenceability through API for my Squarespace site to show availability of the, of the, app, of the site, of the uh, plants. So the idea was using a smartphone, viewers can scan a QR or, originally I did NFC also, so I put NFC tags on every of the signs. Uh, and then, so you'd be browsing, you'd be walking around the, the greenhouse uh, and, and our yard, and you'd see these signs that were printed from Drupal. Um, they were actually printed. They were not, you know, we don't have digital signage out, outside because, you know, rain and weather, the solar, solar conditions, and also it's expensive and they could break. Uh, we operate on a reclaimed tennis court, so it's all just like concrete and stuff. So it's not it's not very conducive to fancy stuff. So and we had these like metal signs that are already there. So I wanted to reuse that. So the outputs a you know, photo zzz, uh, before it was only one. So we had multiple photos that we can like embed. Uh, the common scientific names sci scientific names are really important because uh, common names are oftentimes misleading. Uh, so for example, we have there's a species of uh, daisy called Montauk daisy. It's actually invasive from Japan. Nothing to do with Montauk, so um, you know you want to be careful with the uh, with that, and you want to know. You want to look at look at the scientific name of the species that you're actually buying because the common name could be anything or misleading. It had descriptions that I rewrote because the ones that we had were too technical, and I wanted to make it really easy. So I I did uh, symbology for all the features like deer resistance and uh, you know things like that. Uh, and then everything was referenceable from other data sources online, so you can get information back. I wanted to make it concise but not replicable, uh, rep because there's a lot of databases out there, and I didn't want to like create just another one, you know, and duplicate things. So it was for pr the primary purposes for signage. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. Oh, well, here's my demo. Okay, so so um, this is the website uh, from a an admin view. Um, you know, I have basically a view that I created with availability. So you know, each, each content item has, uh, like this is, this is Yarrow. You probably have seen this before. Clearly I can get some better pictures for this one because it was a little, little zoomed in. But we have like, uh, you know, the multiple pictures here, uh, the information that's coming in. Uh, this is all uh, either straight fields or it's referencing taxonomy. So taxonomy like uh, the plant type, uh, I think the duration, yeah, and I'll show you that, that detail. The bloom season, flower color, sun tolerance, and um, the features and soil tolerances, all those are, are actual um, taxonomies. So I started to build this relationship, because I was also really familiar with content architectures in general, so, because I'm a content architect. Uh, so, so deer yeah. don't eat arrow. Yeah, deer don't eat arrow, no. yeah, for a number of reasons. Uh, <laughs> mostly anything frilly, so uh, it's just not too easy uh, to see. Yeah. yeah. Stuff. Yeah, so so that's true on Long Island, especially on the East End. Uh, there's a lot of deer, mm -hmm. and deer is a problem. And so deer resistance is a is an important feature for customers who come and buy the plants. 
so so there was that. But you know, the big feature is I click on this nice new PDF link on the bottom, and it actually gens the PDF in real time for me. And this is what it looks like today. So I actually have a few that I brought that are actually uh, ones that we use out in the field. So um, so I already had this the size and the dimensions. So that's what this that's what this line is here. It's cut. Um, and um, basically, we didn't want to pass on that. And so this was the rebranded one. I'll show you a picture of the original one too. But um, so th this will be, and then we laminate them so that they don't get destroyed from the rain. Yeah. And so there's a QR code to come back to this information on the website once you you know leave, right? And, and you can just take that, and so you could actually get to the database. Um, and yeah, so I use any print for this. I'll talk about that in a moment. What is that wave icon just like? Oh, yeah. So, so the wave icon is salt tolerant. So oh. I live on an island. Long Island yeah. is, is on the eastern yeah. seaboard. Yeah. Yeah. So, so things that are salt tolerant would be found along the shoreline, right? So like Yarrow is one of those examples. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so we actually had a bunch, and I'll talk about that in a moment, too. Uh, so, yeah, so let's talk about the success, and I'll, t I'll go into the detail of the site. So, this is what it looks like today um, on your phone version um, and in the print version. Uh, this is what it looks like in real, in real life. Uh, this was the original design. I actually had a code, an NFC tag that I put on there, um, and then, you know, basically used my phone to code that one for the specific uh, um, URL to go directly to it. Uh, so this is an example of what actually a lot of it now is up on top of uh, tables, but same idea. So these metal signs. And so we keep this up. Uh, well, we don't keep it up now because it's winter, but uh, we keep it up pretty much all year. You know, starting in like March. Uh, so yeah, our, my nursery managers—they are not technical people. They, you know, they play with soil and all this all the time, and you know, we're doing up potting and volunteer work and things like that, and mowing the mowing the, the plot. Uh, but they're able to come in to Drupal and actually edit the the, uh, the content, which is nice. I also created a view for them, uh, which allows for availability. So uh, and they can they can click on which ones are available or not, uh, so that then I can render that in real time from the other website, so that people know which ones we have in stock and which ones we don't. Because that was an issue before, where we just had like a list of all the plants that we could have, and then most of the time we had like half of them. Uh, during my project, I also gamified the, uh, the project uh, for the CCE program. I created a view that generated a QR bingo, and it would actually randomize every time it would, it would render. And so the, so the, then these were, these are like 50, 60 year old or more older people, like, so I had them like do this. Uh, and so I, I printed out a bunch of these QR code, these, these bingos, and whoever, had, whoever won, won some plants from me. So it was like, oh, which, you know, find, find a, a plant that has tight grasses, uh, find one that, that can grow in full shade. Solidago, Solidago is a genus for uh, goldenrod. Uh, so, so yeah, so that was fun. Uh, so I gamified that for the project. And this was cool, because I never built a view like this before. So it was generating this like field, but I was doing a random generator, and I was like worried about caching, and so I uncached it. So I, I had only dabbled in views very, very little before that, so this was the most complex view I've created. But it may look kind of ugly because of the QR codes, but uh, yeah, it was a, I, th I thought it was, it was a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, implementation, so we have the notion of plan content type. So I actually I had some team members from the program who also were not technical, but we were we spent a lot of time thinking about what we want to put into this information and what we don't want to have in there. Um, and so, you know, we ended up with this with this uh, reduced list because I wanted it to be accessible and easier for somebody to engage with. Uh, so that's why we did the symbology. The QR code generator was the easiest thing to add because it was literally like the QR underscore code module, and it just gens the the URL. I uh, I modified the the uh, plant the the URL to be a four letter code that was so that's how we label our species. And so it's the first two letters of the genus and the first two letters of the species are are the URL. So 
so the yarrow is uh, Achillea, um, whatever, mulifolium, right? So it's ACMI instead of right, writing out yarrow, because get common names are not great. And it's easier to, you know, type that in too, I suppose. Um, so yeah, use identity print. I'll talk a lot about that today because that's, that took a lot of effort, more effort than I thought, because it's not designed to do this signage to a, to a T, so I'll talk about that. Uh, UX, I, I chose specifically not to use Site Studio from Acquia, even though I have, you know, I, I can have access to it and I have a demo environment, right? But um, I did not want to use Site Studio, and I also wanted to test out Layout Builder because we would talk about Layout Builder and before we talked about panels and stuff. And I never really used it except for actually, you know, being in our demo. And actually, we don't actually have a Layout Builder demo besides like, uh, a, um, you know, Drupal Vanilla, which we don't really demo as Acquia. We demo our product, right, as an enhancement. So, I, I this was my first time using it. Although it wasn't a full website, it's mostly database. Uh, I did use it for the plant. Uh, render uh, to map out where the fields were on the on the template, uh, and then later I added the API call, which was also really easy to do using JSON to feed the plan availability on my Squarespace site. So let's go take a look at that. And I'll talk about that in a moment too. So let's see. So we have uh, here my plant database. So. So the content type, uh, so actually I have a few different content types, but I only ended up using like one. This was intended to be used for multiple locations too, so for multiple, uh, Limpy's unique, but there's also another, uh, like a, a plant uh, community garden that's also na native heavy out in Halleckville, and it was supposed to be meant for multiple places so that we could say, oh, Here's the information for Yarrow, and oh, it's located. You know, you could buy it in these different locations or something like that. So, um, so the content type uh, was you know heavily taxonomy based. So the bloom season, um, <coughs> duration, features, flower colors, and things like that. Uh, something that was cool that that I liked to, was the yeah the QR field yeah field actually so it's not QR it's great it's field QR it was really you know, add it and you're done. So this was my first foray into really adding modules and actually using them as well, because usually my demo team did that for me and then gave me the distro and I just use it. And I say, hey, can you add this? And they're like, okay. Right, so writing code, writing, not just writing the, dis the, the distribution code, the code base, but also, you know, running module, a adding commands through, well, I used to do it in D7 with Drush and now I'm using Composer. So, you know, it was a little bit of a, of a, uh, of a shift. Uh, something that, that I wanted, uh, you know, we, we talked about the OLCO taxonomy here, features. So, features. Oh, I want the list actually. So, so, like all of these, I wanted to make sure that they were easy to understand. So, like Butterfly Friendly has, you know, these, the has a has a symbology, and so we did with the salt tolerance was one. So these were the ones that we decided upon. I, I, because of Drupal, I can add more, and then I can tag a buttload of them. Like let's say, you know, we were, we, we wanted to add something for, you know, swamp or something friendly, you know. Wetland. Yeah, wetland, yeah, yeah, wetland friendly, um, or actually, I, I don't even know what else I would have added here. Uh, maybe a different insect. Right, because butterflies are not the only pollinators. Actually, moths are the largest pollinating species. Uh, but other things too, like ants. Ants actually pollinate violets. Um, but and you know, of course, there's bees too. But there's other things. It could be other things that we could add it. So if I had not done this database, it would be difficult or impossible to go do that. And nobody would be able to search on them either to find information later. So that's why I did that that way. Um, so like hummingbirds was actually something newer that we can, that we brought in because that's very specific to only a handful of species that have the right flower structure to you know you know they're really closed uh, that attracts the uh, the hummingbirds because they're specialists. Um, yeah. So so a note about the the project. Um, I want to see. So let's see. Where is my 
So I, I used um, the entity print module up uh, here. This is the entity print module. The configuration doesn't do much in the interface. And actually, Matt was one of the, uh, as an earlier uh, contributor. So I tried to enlist him to help me with some of this stuff a while ago when I first started it. So it's, it's kind of, um, it's designed for print output uh, of a web page. Uh, like, uh, you know, print my receipt or something like that. It's not designed for pixel perfect digital sign uh, uh, signage to render in the PDF. So I spend literally hours messing with CSS and going back and forth and rendering it a million times. Uh, it was not easy. There's a debug mode and also it did not, did not render properly either compared to what the PDF output was. So I had a lot of problem with that. Um, you know, once I got things pretty close, it was it was easier, but it's still like, even tweaking it. It took way too long to do that. But then I was able to do it for then I could print eighty plus signs or whatever, and then it's fine. So we're always adding new new uh, species that we find in the wild and we collect and then we generate we and then we propagate them. So there could there could be hundreds in, in this database at some point. Right now, I think we have only eighty or ninety. But uh, but yeah the. I'll show you about that actually also. No, I'll show the API calls first too. So so afterwards, um, so limpy.org, because uh, also it's maintained you know, by non-technical people, and we already had it on Squarespace, I kept it there, because it's also cheaper, um, and there's less overhead. Uh, so, but when I go to the plant sales section, I actually, and this was the first time I used jQuery and using JavaScript to actually call an API, I've never done that before. So I did that here. Uh, so if I look at the at the page uh, at the at the page, actually, we can just look at the network settings. So there's, I'm actually calling the JSON uh, from the database and then filtering by type. So this is the first time I ever use APIs. Period. Because I usually use demo stuff, right? I don't actually make it. So this was kind of cool. And then I I did a CSS overlay where I actually pulled back the information, whether it was available or not, but I don't display that. I, I, I changed the format to be a cross-through. That was just a, a, no, a notion that I had, but open for suggestions on that. And I have a last updated date, too, which is whatever the last save was. I found some view uh, or call that would give me that, too. Uh, so yeah, so the entity print PDF generator, this is a screenshot of that. Um, I'll go into my IDE for that, so on Acquia. Um, but this is the, it, you basically have to use this, you have to have a specially formatted Twig file, and then and then there's a special CSS that it calls. And that's the CSS that, you know, the actual Twig is not that hard to manage, but the CSS was super hard to manage. So I'll show you that part too. So, so I used uh, IDE. Uh, through Acquia because I had access to it. So I don't actually have Drupal installed on my computer. I don't have, I guess I have PHP installed. I don't use it. Um, so everything's on the cloud, uh, which is cool. So so I actually have, you know, I have my my dev station prod environment in Acquia. It's my free account, so that's nice uh, that I get one. And I have access to spin up one IDE. And so an IDE in the cloud means that I have an environment that I can that I can run commands on, Acquia CLI commands, um, also the uh, commands for for Composer like updates and things like that, and it gives me easy way to you know copy from prod again, right? Because then there'll be updates to the production database, and uh, maybe new new images, new assets. I want to bring it back down to clone and dev to maybe tweak something, right? So it. It's been really, you know, it's been really helpful to do that, honestly, uh, and then it gives me full access to like the code base and tells me what's what's different and things like that. So, the uh, I think it's in the the custom theme. So I actually haven't modified it in a while, but here, here's the CSS. So like the print style view. Uh, is this it? No. Here it is, print style. So, uh, because a lot of things don't work in print mode that they do on the website, and, and even with the debug, 
it didn't really render properly. Like if I go to the debug, it does not look like that. Uh, things are things aren't in the right place. They're they're uh, they're like outside of the lines, and even like defining how many inches something was, it didn't really render the right. So I had to like tw I had to keep going back and forth and tweaking it, and that was my biggest challenge with this. And it continues to be a challenge because I keep adding more and more CSS. So I'm sure there's a better way of doing this. Um, you know, I do tables and table cells because it doesn't do floating divs and all kinds of stuff because PDF doesn't like that. Uh, so that was that was the ratio. Um, I don't know. You don't like to do with video sixteen to nine. And What's that? The ratio you got for videos you can set oh. four to three, sixteen to nine, whatever. Oh, oh okay, okay. yeah. Hack that for. Oh, maybe that might be helpful. CSS and this is about like a sixteen. Minute. Yeah, I think it was like 10, 10 inches, 10 and change by like six. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that that was arbitrary because we already had this digit, the it's signs. It's yeah, it's yeah. It's That's right, yeah, so. And it needed actually space where I can, it needed to be smaller than that so I, ha I, can, I can cut the, mm -hmm. the plastic. Otherwise, some people were cutting it too, too thin and then you know, the water would get through and then destroy the, the sign. We actually had to replace them. Um, but yeah, this, this was the, the biggest, you know, otherwise it's pretty generic. You know, Drupal site. So it, again, it was my my first time doing it. Um, I enjoyed doing it. I, I was also asking some colleagues for assistance. Uh, Drupal's hard. <laughs> um, you know, even having a CMS background, that part wasn't hard for me. Like the whole management, of the structure, and the content architecture, and defining entities and things like that, and taxonomies. That was totally fine. But once it's dealing with like, how do I do this thing in a view? How do I do this thing? In Layout Builder, how do I even use this module? Uh, it was varying levels of, of uh, you know, I could figure it out or I couldn't, and I needed some help. And I did reach out a couple times on the forums, but it wasn't, maybe I wasn't asking the right questions, I don't know. I had some mixed results with that. Um, yeah, so we had the API into Squarespace, uh, from before Squarespace, so this was great because we were manually copying and pasting this stuff into the site and it was like every time something changed like oh we don't have swamp milkweed anymore you know to take it off the website too so one more thing uh, and so you may ask well why did I stick it at Acquia well yeah one is I get a free account so it's just running on my employee account for now uh, it can't run forever unless if I'm there forever but uh, you know the the cloud dashboard that I showed you with the DevStage prod, with the environments, and um, the IDE, and the Acquia CLI, and the SSL cert upload, like that whole dashboard, that was my first time actually being a customer. And it was pretty good. I, I really like the IDE especially. I have not used CoStudio yet on it. I, have, I don't do that much dev on, on the distro, but, um, but that's my next step, using CoStudio, which is our flavor of GitLab and then it would connect into the IDEs, and so it would help me do things like update Drupal uh, more easily. But uh, I don't have multiple devs, I don't have, you know, it's just me, so it's, it's pretty basic. I don't necessarily need a full, like, GitLab to manage this process. I don't have a whole, like, backlog of features either. It's less, less professional, it's more amateur, but, uh, but yeah, that's why I chose Acquia for a number of those reasons. But yeah, I mean, I would, look to, you know, eventually would need to, if I needed to move it somewhere else, I would have to host it elsewhere. And I would lose access to the ID. I'd have to now install it locally or deal with something on my own with Docker. I'm sure that's what you guys all do. I just haven't done it before. You know. Or using Lando, right? Whatever. Yeah. DDEV is super awesome. What's that? DDEV is D D E. Oh, yeah, DDEV. Yeah. DDEV is amazing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't used that yet. Either I saw somebody had a DDEV shirt on right just before. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, what's that?" Okay. Um, yeah, I know. I know that Acquia recommends Lando, so I probably would have looked at that. But yeah, DDEV Lando. I mean, they're probably all. Do they do the similar things? Or yes. No? Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. 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 I just thought DDEV was the best. Seems like DDEV has been endorsed more by Drupal. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I've seen it on the website too, unlike Drupal DDEV. So. So a couple of my challenges that I had, I purposely chose Layout Builder just to test it out. Honestly, I was underwhelmed. I was spoiled by Site Studio. Uh, by Site Studio. It w not only was this less intuitive and capable than Squarespace, which I assumed it would be, 
but I wish I would have used Site Studio because I could have done some things in minutes that it took me a few hours to figure out because I had to find the right module and then hook them the right thing. And and um, I mean, yes, Site Studio is not open source, but uh, I use it all the time, and it's it would have been it would have been easier if I was building. If I built the actual website with pages, it would have been even better to use Site Studio. But since I figured I was only building like a database right now, it wasn't that important. And also, I couldn't take it with me somewhere else. So. But uh, if you guys haven't tested that out, um, you know Site Studio is actually really good. I mean, but it's, as I said, it's not open source, but it's 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 really useful from a editorial perspective. A note about the QR codes and NFC tags, you'll notice on the, on the current signs there are no NFC tags. So the QR codes were really successful. People knew how to use them, even the older folks, even the older phones, everyone uses these now. And bonus, they print flat because they're just, they're just ink. NFC tags were cool. Everyone's like, ooh, NFC tags, let's go do that. But they were like, what's an NFC tag, right? But then. I, I launched them out, it was like two years ago, during September, and I put them all out with the NFC tags. So first I had to find special tags, because uh, normal NFC tags don't work uh, with on metal backing. So it works best like on, you know, something non-conductive. Right? And I needed tags that withstood uh, wind, rain, and solar conditions, otherwise it wouldn't have been helpful. And same with a sticky part, the, the actual adhesion needed also, because you know it gets 90 degrees in, the, in August or, or hotter, and the sun's baking it, and, and then, and then it, it deluges. So it's, it's harsh conditions. There's no protection. Because uh, th these are not in the greenhouse, they're actually out on the yard, right, which was the tennis court. So, and not all phones work with them. Um, so older iPhones, while they had NFC, like they didn't allow for the NFC tagging to work in this, most situations. And you know, I have, we have a lot of older visitors. They didn't know what to do with them. I, I, wrote, I like wrote like click here, you know, like uh, I wrote around the thing, uh, like put your phone here, whatever I wrote to say, uh, to, to scan it. Um, but, and they also were not flat. So when we put them all together, then they were getting stuck on all the corners and things and ripping off. And, so I decided not, not, to, not to use them anymore. They were also more expensive because I had to buy them each time. Because uh, once I adhered them, they weren't really coming off. <laughs> uh, it was hard to do that. So, so yeah, NFC tags are cool, but I would say leave them inside or in an enclosed environment. Like the ones I, I bought were these like black, thick things uh, that, that had like a protective coating. They were meant for like warehouses where you would go to each of the, and then uh, as a warehouse manager, you would go and scan to see like what's in that, what's in that listing or something. So cool, but not, 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 uh, not useful. So I had to redesign all of the, the, um, uh, the signs so that, you know, I, I would center the, make the NFC, t uh, make the QR code in over here, remove the NFC tag. And if I had to do that in 80 slides, it would have been a pain in the butt, right? So. Uh, one other issue that I'm having, uh, maybe you guys know how to fix this, maybe it's simple, is the ordering of my requests. So, and maybe I shouldn't be doing multiple requests. So, I needed to get my current plant list by category. So, wildflowers, um, you know, bushes, the shrubs, trees, vines. But every time it loads the page, uh, a different one comes up first, and the order is different. Even though the request stream is the same, but the actual render, it's random, it's random mm. which is not a huge problem. It annoys me, I'm sure it doesn't, nobody really cares, but like it annoys me. So I don't know, I'm, this is my first time using API calls in, 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 in JavaScript or anywhere, um, and it's in the right order. I, do I have to like delay them or something, or you know, maybe only have one call, but uh, I could use some assistance on that too, because I'm not an API expert. But, uh, yeah. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Are you using the core JSON API, or are you using like a view with an export of a JSON? Oh, good question. Um, I think I'm using the view. Let me see. 
Any of views have like an ex export like a rest or something? Yeah, I think I'm using a view. So if I go to views, um, yeah, let me go to this list. Yeah, I think it's the plant list. So yeah, I have a rest export. Oh, okay, yeah. I have two of them. So I have the last updated, which just gives me the, um, so yeah, I'm using views as that, not, not core. So this one just shows me, you know, the last updated. So then I just, I just render that. So that's always fine. Cause I think it's in a different, maybe it's why, maybe it's a Squarespace thing. Cause it's in a different block of, of JavaScript. I could try that. And then the rest export is basically getting the, those fields back. Um, and then filtering by the by the plant type, right? And then rendering the uh, the content. So I, I do I do feel and so well the the location is lengthy as number six, but but uh, I do I do keep the notion of publish. So I if there are at, if there are plant plants that I haven't finished yet, I don't I don't publish them necessarily. Or I have a test plant that looked like Audrey too. Mm -hmm. I don't want that on the site. Um, I did that for, you know, I kept it for jokes before, but I don't want to keep it there <laughs> permanently. Um, but yeah, I guess if I look at the request, actually let me go into Squarespace and maybe that's what it is. Oh, I have to go into my profile. So. So it might be you just have to play with your sorts on that view. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Looked like you were sorted by plant type. I am, yeah. So, so that was working. So, but each one's an individual request. So either I want to have one big old view, um, yeah. and maybe I mean that would probably help if I if I created one request. It would also be more efficient. Not that people are going to the site all the time, but oh, so yeah. that, they're out of order just because the network type. Like they yeah them yeah at different times and whoever wins first is first. That, that that's what it is. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like it's just depending it based on which one returns first. They created containers in the DOM for each one. Yes. And then appended them to the to their specific. Oh, uh, okay. When they come back, then you you could control the order. I think. Yeah, I'm sure this is like sacrilege to you guys, but you know, <laughs> here's my. So because I actually add the yeah, I have a container, and then I, and then I do the fetch, for, each one separately. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, because this is the wildflower one. Grass. I, I created a little script, so I have one script to make generate the call. I have three calls to it. So it, it yeah. So I'm uh, sorry. What was your recommendation? If you have a place to insert each one of those, and you insert. <laughs> oh each oh one oh. So instead of one big container, I have like the wildflower container. Dump it here. Dump it here. Dump yeah, it. Yeah. Copy oh. that and just have them do one at a time. Oh, that would make it. Totally yeah. Order. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Thank you. How'd you go about printing all of them? So, uh, yeah, so I didn't have a script to, did I do it by? I created a view that had the view print button. Mm -hmm. And so I just went boom, 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 boom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I did not, uh, yeah, because I still needed to actually print them uh, from my printer, from my computer. So I, yeah, I, I didn't have an automated way of doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be cool, though. Yeah, I didn't know if you were able to come up with a one giant PDF of 80 pages. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I did not, but I do, one of my challenges is I, I need another sign size, and like Entity Print doesn't support that. So I was looking at that, too. Mr. Brightman, I use Adobe. <laughs> yeah. So, the printable signs were a major requirement. This was like the only choice I found, but as I said, it's designed for printing web pages, so it took me forever to make the design. And the second sign, there is like a, I think someone's got a dev, like a patch, but I wasn't having able to get it working. But basically have like a second view mode. Because, uh, you know, we, the use cases, like normally our, our plant signs are that big, and you know, we have these trays of the, of the plants and they're, whatever, two by three feet of, of plants in like quarts and things, over four gallons. Uh, but sometimes we have uh, less, fewer, fewer uh, of, the, of the individuals, so maybe only like one tray, and I'd want like, or maybe a half a tray, and I want something like only this big. 
that still has maybe, you know, it would, might have all the information, but it would have less of it, and then it would only be like three inches by four inches instead, and a different, and a different dimension, so I could print those too. Uh, that would be cool. <laughs> Um, but I have not been able to get that work in. I haven't had time to really mess with it too much. Sorry, what was your recommendation? Go to Adobe? <laughs> well, that was to make that 80 page PDF if you wanted to have, like, just a full. Oh, yeah, PDF. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, once you download them, I can then, like, combine. I can merge, combine using an Acrobat. Yeah. yeah. I don't but, know if you can scale things with that or not. You might be able to. Well, you can also print uh, multiple per page, I think. I think you could, or you add, you add them as pages. Two on page, yeah. Yeah, you, you can merge them. Into one big document. Uh, so let's say you have like 50 PDFs, you can use Acrobat. I don't think Reader, but but full Acrobat, you can actually merge them together into one 50-page document, and then you can change your print settings. So like if like a slide view, as you were kind of thinking of, like you wanted smaller ones. Um, I I did not do that. Um, you know, we were just printing them. So we do multiples of those because we'll we'll paste them on the wall also, like in a big mosaic almost. So people can see what's out on the in out on the field instead of having to walk. I mean, it's not that much, but you know, having to walk up and down and seeing all the things. It's good to be like, oh, I want to get that, and then we can like take them down when they're not available anymore, which was nice. So, um, so we only need a, a couple of copies of them, which is good. And mostly, it's because you know, then you take you, you use your phone, you tag it, and then now you have it on your phone for later. Or and then you and then you close the window and go, oh yeah, go to limpy.org find the thing in the database, and I can just click on it again. So multiple ways of getting back to the same information. But uh, yeah, if anyone has had experience with entity print, um, that would be also helpful. Because uh, it was definitely interesting to utilize. And it, and it works. But uh, I also reached out. Uh, so we actually partner, Aquia partners well, through the dam. So we bought Widen years ago. Uh, so that's an enterprise dam. They're also not open source, but um, they they have this templating engine, and everybody uses the same. Other dams too use the same engine. It's called Print UI, and what that does is like that was founded, like, I assume, by like ex Adobe people, and so you can generate an InDesign file with like placeholder tags and stuff, so that you you can then publish this this template, but then have a, a non-technical user like input and change certain areas of it. So like a business card or you know some sort of uh, printed glossy, like even like 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 a like a sign, right? Or material uh, sales material uh, where it maintains the design for you. It was built by a designer, but then the designer is not creating a hundred of them. They're creating one template, and then like the product owners, whoever is building and marketing is building them. So I reached out to them to see, oh, is there an API I could do, I could send it to you guys? So they said no. So I was like, hey, thanks. Um, so there's, there might be a better way, but that was, yeah, this is the one I found in Drupal. Actually, I, I don't know, I wouldn't have been able to do this any more easily in like Content Server or Tridian or Interwoven either. So, you know, Drupal gave me more flexibility than I would have had in, in, if I was not at Acquia looking at using my own product my own product for it absolutely uh, so things that I wanted to add to this um, is doing more on the code side so actually using code studio or GitLab uh, for Drupal updates in particular because I don't remember to do them and then I come back months later I'm like oh yeah sorry I guess it's, it's you know the security thing pops up you know I'm sure everyone deals with this also, but maybe you, you guys are doing more agile development, so you're always doing updates, but uh, I do less development on this, so like there's times where I won't touch the code for three months or more, right, or six months. Uh, I wanna get that, that extra view, that's really what's important, the view mode, uh, I wanna get that running because then I can actually be more flexible. Also, I can't do this for a second location, like let's say Halleck, you know, farm or whatever, a different, a different location that wants to use my database but wants to generate a different plant sign with a different design. I can't do that today without having a second Drupal or, you know, forking the print module and figuring that out. Um, eventually, and I don't know if we're going to actually do this, but a wish list or a shopping cart for plant purchases. I haven't worked anything. I mean, you know, we integrate. I, I would say, like, oh, we partner with 
e-commerce vendors, right? I'm not going to go, you know, use Shopify or anything for this because we're not going to, we don't ship. It's all on-prem and people have to come to us and we don't have, we don't deal with, I mean, we deal with thousands or tens of thousands of plants, but we're not a business like that. Uh, this, this plant sale stuff is really meant, we actually do it at a, at a loss uh, for, for how much, you know, how much re we get recouped for. So it helps fund us, but it's not a money, you know, it's not a profit center for us. It's more for education outreach. People are like, oh, I didn't know this plant was native. Like, that's how I got into natives is, I didn't know, I thought everything green was good three years ago. Like, so I had ivy growing up in my house and all this stuff. And, and then I went to the Limpy plant sale and I saw a prickly pear cactus. I'm like, what? So that's actually native to my area. So that's like probably here too, but since, like I didn't, and ever that's what people get shocked about. It's like I didn't know this thing was native, or I didn't know this thing was not native. Um, so, so we, we we do it mostly for education outreach. But I I would like to have more of a consumable way for people instead of just seeing the information to come with a list, or you know see uh, if we have it more than if we have it in stock, but like at how, much, how many we have if we start doing inventory. Or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because we also do wholesale um, and restoration projects like with other organizations. So if they need like, it's like, oh, we need switchgrass. It's like, okay, how many do you need? Oh, we need 500 of them. It's like, okay, wait, well, see, do we have that many? Because like, we're, we deal, we're a small, you know, we, we, don't, we don't deal with thousands of the same species. Uh, it's it's usually dozen. We have dozens or hundreds, probably usually hundreds of it, like low hundreds. Uh, I like a better UX for plant visualization and search. Right now, I'm using like the views and exposing the filters, and it's it works. Like this, uh, if I go back, to, like this, but it's, it's kind of ugly. You know, like if you go to like a like an actual plant site to buy plants, like it's a lot nicer, right? Uh, to find things and to, you know maybe we I do facets on the left or something instead this was you know easy and it's like out of the box right it's out of the box feature um, so that's why I did that but again my, my first time into doing this view thing uh, but it is kind of you know it's not the nicest it's it's a little utilitarian it looks kind of generic and it looks like a developer kind of made it you know mm -hmm. so um, I would like to make it a little bit better um, also you know right now I'm using Drupal as the as the digital asset source is that you know I would not recommend that if I talk to you as Acquia I'm like hey you have all these digital assets you need to manage it somewhere I mean we don't have like photographers and big source media as much like we're not doing videos and stuff uh, or anything like that but um, and I don't have to deal with digital rights so much because <coughs> I either it's our photography or I find like you know the uh, open source licenses uh, for you and then we just like tag it. So we don't like buy Getty images or anything like that. Um, but I was thinking about using Aquidam as the source. Actually, in my old, we used to partner with Webdam, which is now they bought up by Binder. And my demo was all of my pictures from my, from my garden as like my demo. So, you know, I do that for, but that's not connected, you know, to the site. And finally, like, yeah, Squarespace is easy, but it sucks. <laughs> um, one thing we do a lot of is events. Uh, we do volunteer, uh, weekly volunteer days, and I can't put them on the website because it doesn't support recurring events, Squarespace. You can, you can clone events, but you can't say, like, oh, have this happen every Friday from 10 to 2. It's like, no, nope, doesn't happen. No calendar. Yeah, so, yeah, no, no count. I mean, they have a calendar view. And a great event, I mean, the event is easy to set up. It just, you can't just set up a recurring event. Mm. So I'm thinking about maybe either moving that off of Squarespace, embedding that into Drupal or whatever. And ideally, like, maybe do I do move the whole thing into Drupal. And then, what, and then what? Do I use Layout Builder, right? And then do more of that. And then is that going to be easier or harder for my team? So right now it's separate. They're, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's two separate applications. But, um, you know, ideally they should be one. So, you know, Drupal in the future would probably make sense, especially with Layout Builder. But yeah. So, so those are, that was what I wanted to cover. I know it might have been higher level than maybe you guys expect at Drupal Camp. This is my first time at Drupal Camp.
but uh, this is also my first Drupal project. So, and they asked me to like, oh, well, since we're, uh, and since we're sponsors, like, oh, we have a slot for you. So, that's what I came up with. <laughs> it's a good taste, sir. Oh, thank you. If you go through the event, Smart Date Field, I think it has a recurring thing. You can even say, like, a certain Friday is a holiday and make an exception. Uh -huh. Smart Date? Smart Date, yeah, I think it's called Smart Date. Okay, that's a, the module? Yeah. Yeah. Um, something also, it would be nice to, uh, we use um, signup.com for uh, signups for the, um, I just started this this, this past year uh, for like the volunteer days. Oh. Also, I did not use Signup Genius because it didn't support like infinite uh, recurrent, uh, it, it's, you had to set a certain number of people. You couldn't have like it open. So the maximum was like 20 or something like that. So it was kind of weird, even though Sign Up Genius is, is kind of better. Um, let me see if I can even get in here. But yeah, we have like volunteering. Like this. So so people are able to actually, so this is not on Drupal either. I would love to integrate all this stuff together, but also I'm limited by every tool's ability to have API and access and whatever. Um, as with anybody else, I'm sure you guys deal with that on, on a daily basis. So it's interesting, you know, because I can talk about those things as an architect in my job, um, as like the art of the possible, but actually doing it is a much harder, right? So, so it, it helps me uh, become a better sales engineer by actually doing some of the stuff, because then I could relate better to, you know, developers and engineers who are not just sales engineers, they're actually engineers. Are there any, any questions um, or any other, other comments on that? Cool. Cool. Well, thanks for, thanks for attending. I wasn't sure how many people I was going to get. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.